Um, I'm here. I'm Zucky from Sommelier Finance uh, uh, with a fellow traveler in the space, uh, Ari uh, uh, from Gelato Network. Uh, awesome, awesome to be here. Awesome to talk about Uniswap V3. Uh, you know, we're all building. We're all trying to figure out the the puzzle that is Uniswap V3. So yes. we're going to dive in uh, and get uh, and get a quick intro to Gelato Network and a quick intro to Ari. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about all things Uniswap V3 and providing liquidity. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me, by the way. Excited to be here. Great to talk to a fellow Uniswap V3 um, pioneer. So exciting times. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Go for it. Like, what is Gelato Network? How do, like, what's the sort of top line selling position? And then, like, who are you? Awesome. Yeah, cool. So I'll start with Gelato Network. So Gelato is um, the uh, decentralized network of bots for uh, generalized automation of smart contracts. So automated smart contract executions, mostly on Ethereum, though expanding to other chains, especially layer twos and side chains. Um, uh, and so the idea is basically there are a lot of functionalities on the blockchain, as I'm sure you know, that involve actually um, bots interacting with the blockchain. This is because blockchains are kind of fundamentally lazy. They need an external source in order to execute a little bit of code. You can't run a cron job on the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, you can't say do this in a few blocks or when this happens. Um, you you need this external impulse, and so there are a lot of there are a lot of different use cases that could have automation. Of course, it's not impossible to do automation yourself, but this involves having some backend infrastructure, putting maybe a private key in a script so that you're monitoring the blockchain, and then when the the thing happens, when you know when it's finally July fifteenth or when the price of some token goes below a certain price, then you actually would automatically sign a transaction and execute this transaction on the blockchain. Um, but you know, this involves having your own backend infrastructure. It has a bunch of little problems, obviously, um, uh, that you might have to deal with resubmitting transactions, the gas fees. Um, uh, as well as it's trusted, you see, in the way I just said there, you actually need to have the private key of the person who wants to do something automated. So uh, Gelato tries to find a way to do this trustlessly um, so that on your behalf, bots will execute the transactions you want executed based on the conditions you have. And basically, we're a uh, for hire um, bot network that will reliably execute trans transactions on your smart contracts when you want them executed. That's what you're yeah. about. I mean, we started Sommelier with a very similar vision um, of trying to do this. I think our, our, our sort of core differentiator is we're trying to use a Cosmos SDK chain as sort of the coordinator mechanism. Um, but like, you know, very much fellow travelers in the space. But what I, I think is like sort of the, the thing that brought us together on this is, is that like, you know, we, there were all kind. There were there, there were a bunch of niche use cases for automation, um, off chain automation, and then Uniswap v three uh, appeared on the scene. Um, well, actually, we didn't get an intro to Ari. Uh -huh. we an intro to Ari, and then and then and then we'll we'll jump to Uniswap. Then we'll dive in because I think your perfect point you were making there about us and is perfect. So, but anyway, really quick, who am I? I'm a smart contract developer and a cryptographer. Um, got uh, really into cryptography and uh, blockchain technology. And uh, like later in life, I totally was interested in other stuff, always been a pretty academic person, but really wasn't into computers at all and only got into the computer science space when I started, when blockchain was just sort of rising a bit in 2016. And I thought the concepts were super interesting. And then I did a very deep dive into cryptographic math and thought that was super fascinating. And, um, uh, and uh, but it all actually started because I thought these blockchain projects seemed really exciting, Bitcoin and Ethereum at the time. And so uh, after a few years of doing a bunch of stuff it, around that space, now I would call myself like a smart contract developer hacking away on the uh, Ethereum virtual machine. So that's what I do now. 
that's a that's a great story. Okay, so why don't you tell me why like your story about like uh, or like what the mental model you've built up over why you why does Uniswap v three require decentralized automation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I think I, you you were just pointing to it, and it was this thing of the fact that Uniswap v three came onto the scene. I would say it's probably the most complex protocol that we have in DeFi. Um, and, and also it's worth remembering that DeFi is, is not that old and uh, Uniswap was already a pioneer with V1 and V2 with showing how um, a trustless set of smart contracts could be used in so many ways, right? That it could be this sub protocol uh, and you could start playing money Legos, right? This is a pretty new concept that I feel like Uniswap was already a bit of a pioneer there. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, but Uniswap V3 takes this to a whole nother level because providing liquidity, now you have all of these choices. Um, I would say this is the, the, the biggest thing, I'm sure we're gonna be talking about it a lot, but basically it's a very complex protocol um, that also has all these possibilities of integrations and periphery. And I almost, as, as, a, as a developer, I really think all about almost like the way they structure their code. You know, they have always had like uh, the core contracts and then the periphery. And the periphery in Uniswap code is always, it's very dense, it's full of stuff. That's where a lot of stuff actually lies. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's the combination of those two things. One, that it's a very complex protocol and that now also there are a lot of complex parameters for interacting with it. Uh, we used to sort of be one size fits all for the liquidity providers. And now of course, liquidity providers have many choices and dials to play with. And then that plus the fact that um, there are all these different ways that it could be a sub protocol of something else. Um, that it could be uh, uh, used under the hood by other DeFi products, but it's very complex. And so um, I think those two facts mean um, that um, these sort of helper side um, products are going to be very, very important in the growing Uniswap V3 ecosystem. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just give sort of, so I think when we say that Uniswap V3 is very complex, I think there's a bunch of uh, uh, of things that like, as you pop, as you, as like, you know, I'm sure you've encountered this, we've encountered this, like the math is very subtle and comp and sophisticated, right? Yep. Um, like, and so far is like sort of the, 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 the API surface area around all of the, um, you know, tick management functions and all of this stuff is sort of also, you know, um, you know, when, when I, I, we, when we're working on it, like there's a lot of like, oh, we're just like banging our heads on trying to get this like uh, equation that like exists in solidity or JavaScript, like implement the language that we want. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm sure you, you're living that life too. Aren't yes, you? yes, very, very much so. Yes, uh, for sure. I think the way that even just actually the calls you have to make to do a swap or to provide liquidity are now much more advanced. You need to know things about ticks and putting 1.0001 to the power something and all these. All, yes, for sure that 100%. Yeah, uh, keep going. So, so I think, so I think that's, you know, I think the core of what Uniswap v3 is like, like sort of the conceptual framework is like actually quite like understandable and elegant and like easy to build in it. it like you can build some nice intuitions around it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, but I think that like, again, like one of the things that I think is also really fascinating is just like the number of potential products that can exist on top of, that can use Uniswap v3 um, as, as a, as a core primitive, the other, the other thing that like, I'll basically say is, um, you know, there is kind of been this, um, uh, I, I'm curious actually where you, where you fall on this, cause you're investing time and energy and trying to solve the problems of, of, uh, of, of, um, of range uh, of like liquidity range management. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, so like, you know, there's a, there's a whole camp out there that thinks that, um, that like passive liquidity management is the future is like the, is the future and that 
Uniswap V3 has sort of taken the wrong turn by uh, uh, by abandoning that. Like, wh what's your take on this, Ari? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you're almost setting me up for, for a home run there in that, of course, when you braid automation and uh, more uh, more choices for the liquidity provider, you basically, I guess our goal, and it's it's not... We're not the only ones, I'm sure, very similar goals in Sommelier and across the people who are first working on Uniswap v3 and what to do with it. Some of the obvious, one of the most obvious things to do is to provide liquidity providers with like repassivize their experience, give them a passive experience again, but without losing out on the competitive fees. So basically allow yourself to be a competitive market maker, which would involve this active analysis of your position and, and tweaking it, right? Um, but allow people to have the passive experience of V2, but uh, but still be competitive in V3, which means you need this active management, but if that active management is automated, then you get the best of both worlds. So I sort of feel like um, this that's the future, right? Passive liquidity provision, in my opinion, is some somewhat the future, but I, like, mixed in with active and the thing is that the the strong passive liquidity providers will basically be leveraging automation in my opinion so i guess the way i would so, so, so there's like a couple of things that like so like i i'm i am fairly uh fairly bought into concentrated liquidity is the future right yeah. um uh concentrated liquidity is the future um i'm and like what I think is like particularly elegant about Uniswap V3 is the way in which you can converge multiple use cases for like the liquidity pool into a single trade, like sort of for these for the person who's swapping, they're swapping against liquidity that is representing like different use cases for different users. Um, so like you know, there's the there's the there's the limit order use case where it's like, hey, like I would just like to, you know I would like to you know if if you know ETH goes over three thousand dollars, I would just like to sell this position, um, and you can like you can you can you can drop liquidity right into the you know the closest tick to three thousand uh, dollars, and if ETH goes past it, you'll be let you know you'll be in a stable coin. Uh, and you know you can you're 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 all set, and so but like that use case is also reducing slippage for traders, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, but and then you can have the use case of like I would just like to like manage my portfolio. Like I don't you know I would like to be buying ETH at a certain price and selling, and if ETH like moons, I'd like to sell some to take profits. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you know, you can represent that as a Uniswap V3 position. Um, and then you can just have the, the sort of, Hey, I just want to like optimize around the spot price. Uh, and then, and like, this is sort of like what we've figured out so far. I think what's, you know, what's interesting and challenging is just like, all of this stuff is like really, it's like, it's hard to build, um, as I'm, as I'm, yes. as I'm sure you're, you're experiencing, like, what are, what are the. You know, is there any particular challenge about building it that you you've been thinking a lot about or working on recently other oh. than like the day to day of like how does the math work yeah i mean for sure there is and you mentioned it and i would reiterate again that the math and the actual just the the underlying work of the integration is super serious a little more it's a lot you feel the difference from your classic decks where you might have a you know, a function where you have a swap or something inside your smart contracts. And it's just, it's pretty smooth. You just need to know the interface, but there's tons of these math complexities at just mentioning that, that that's definitely there and bashing my head all the time against that. Um, I would say, I mean, my big work has basically been in, in fungibilizing, you know, taking a, taking a non-fungible position and fractionalizing it so that, uh, so that we can make it fungible again, which was a you know pretty well understood uh, idea and um, problem. But even there, there were a lot of subtle concerns. So besides just the math, there were some interesting subtle security issues that I ran up against a couple of times. Um, 
For instance, uh, we, we are G-Uni pools, so these Gelato Uniswap V3 pools um, are uh, pretty simple currently. The idea is we have a position, you can own a portion of that position, and the position, we actually don't change the ticks at all. We don't actively rebalance like changing the range. Um, but just automa automated fee reinvestments. So uh, yep. as you know, Uniswap V3 doesn't bring your fees back in. So it doesn't. You, if you want those to be earning fees and being used uh, in in the automated market maker, you actually have to uh, you have to do this manually yourself. So we're just doing automated fee reinvestments. But even with that, right, there were these subtle issues of if we don't continuously uh, count the fees, like in the first version of the protocol that I invented that turned out not, not to be secure. If you, um, if you don't actually account for the fees earned since the last rebalance, I thought, oh, okay, there will be some fees earned, but we don't have to think about those because every so often we'll just throw them into the principal. So we'll just count the principal when people join and exit the pool. But this has a very subtle attack where someone could, of course, withdraw all their liquidity right before we rebalance. Um, and they get a certain rate, um, and then you uh, add, then there's a rebalancing, and we basically invest those fees, and then when they reinvest what they just pulled out, they're going to get a slightly bigger portion. Um, yep. So you can basically front run the automated part, the automated fee reinvestment for your own profit, and this would be a big problem. So little subtle security issues like that um, were, were slightly more unexpected. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that definitely makes me want to uh, take a look at how we're handling that in our uh, automated reinvestment smart contract. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, I mean, I, I think this gets again to the complexity, right? It's like, re, like just the, the, the act of refractionalizing something that is discrete, um, um, it, it, it does have these tricky bits to it where, um, where where value I think and yeah I I do think that like uh, focusing on just fee reinvestment is like maybe not the most compelling product in the world but it's like a you know a reasonable trade off between uh, uh, like uh, sort of safety and uh, and uh, you know getting started somewhere you know exactly we so that's totally not where we started I started um the the product that I started working on was we're going to be the uh, hyper concentrated liquidity and we're going to be following the market price and whenever uh, the price moves in a certain way we'll automatically adjust the bounds of the position but of course there's a lot of risk and subtlety into basically how how this automated strategy works can either very easily bleed money or, you know, be wildly successful potentially. Um, but there's, it, there's a huge hole there, a huge uh, rabbit hole of figuring out, of course, what is that strategy, right? And it, based on all this, you know, all the complexities of off-chain stuff, like basically predict, predicting volatility of certain assets. Um, and so I totally started there, but then slowly we realized that um, that's going to basically, that's going to take longer to think, smooth all the kinks out. But there's already something really helpful in this very simple, very vanilla thing of just making it fractionalizable and also just automatically bringing those fees in since that's something that happened in V2. So we just want the same thing in V3. Um, so yeah, just, just mentioning that completely was, uh, we, 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 got to that place sort of through through actively working and going, you know, I think this is safer. This is kind of like, uh, there's already something here and there's a, uh, we understand the risk profile a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think this is, I think these are the, these are the really interesting questions, right? Is, um, one is like, yes, is, is you know I think a lot about the opportunity uh, like the or the risks of sort of in any of these like fractionalized pools like flash loaning the uh, 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 um, the 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 liquidity into the pool before like a rebalance or something else. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think that I think we're definitely going to see um, uh, pools get bit by uh, by by these sort of subtle subtle effects. Um, Cool. Uh, I mean, this was a great introduction to like what you guys are doing. I think it's, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, we, we sort of have this theme of secret alpha in the, uh, 
in, in these in these uh, 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 sommelier AMAs. Um, and I honestly think that like we, I don't know, I feel like we should probably just do, we, we, we probably could check in once a month with each other uh, for the next few years or, or the next year <laughs> yeah. like, as we figure this out all out. Like, um, but like, you know, what, what's coming down the road? Um, uh, I, G uni is live, I believe. Uh, correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, what's coming down the road, it's, it's not too much alpha because it's all, um, it's all public, but it's all just started. So we're basically, we've been experimenting for the last few months. Um, and we had a few things on mainnet, but it was sort of in only a sort of, uh, you know, a small, small scale, not, not very public, not, um, not giant amounts of liquidity in there, but enough to see how it's working and analyze what we're doing, including even those active rebalancing. We had the first thing we had on mainnet did the active rebalancing, but um, cr quickly realized that making sure that we were going to have sort of a money making strategy there, or, or that you know we weren't going to lose the users' money. I mean, yeah. I think people <laughs> really don't appreciate how many ways there are to lose money. And active rebalancing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It sounds really nice on the surface. What's interesting is it sounds super exciting. You're gonna change. You we're gonna. You know, you can watch the. You can have these beautiful graphs of look how well we've concentrated our liquidity around the current trading price, and it would look like this strategy must be making a killing, but actually it's probably draining money. Um, because of this fact that, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing that I learned, and I'm not the first to say it, but I think people should hear it over and over, is that every time you change your range, you take your impermanent loss and you make it permanent. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if that's the right way to say it, to give people the right intuition to it. I mean, I think the biggest, the biggest one that I, the way I like to explain it to people is it's like every rebalance is at least like sort of at a local time window is selling low and buying high. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And like everybody knows that's not a very effective investment strategy, right? Exactly. And that's what I find so funny is that you can look at that graph of that, this automated reinvestor uh, tracking the price amazingly. And it looks great, but actually all it's doing is over and over buying low, uh, or sorry, buying high and, or, yeah, what is it? Buying high, buying and, high selling and selling low. low. Exactly. Yep. Buying high and selling low. So it looks really great. Wow, it followed the price. But actually, all it's done is made a bunch of bad limit trades um, <laughs> over and over, and you're losing money. Um, so yeah, I think people like the the more you the more you look at it, the more you understand the subtleties, the more you see that there's actually a lot of demons in there. It's very complex. Um, and the less, the more you just see, oh, I could actually concentrate my liquidity and get all these extra fees. And you just see that on the surface, it sounds amazing. Um, so I think we're gonna see that, I guess we're all just gonna learn through suffering if we don't learn through just this, through the I, analysis. I gonna, well, I think I think like what what the future here is, and I, I've said this on this, uh, on this podcast before, which is that the future is going to be more, like more of these vaults are gonna look like structured products um, like what we, what, what people in finance call structured products mm -hmm. where it isn't just like, Hey, we're just going to hold a Uniswap V3 liquidity position. It's going to be, we're going to put a bunch of money Legos together. We're going to allocate capital between them. Um, yeah. and this is going to allow, you know, a sort of a reasonable equilibrium, uh, liquidity management position that works for, works for a bunch of people. Um, exactly. but yeah, I mean, I think, I think this is, I think, you know, this is, you know, I think it's my, my, my prediction for the future is it's going to be, I think when we look back probably about a year from the launch of Uniswap V3, an, a lot more of this stuff is going to be figured out and all of the sort of, and, and the, and the passive liquidity management world um, is going to look pretty obsolete. Um, Completely agree. And and as I said, I guess that the new version of the passive will be just like you say, these products that are synthet that are like a, a big jumble of money Legos where they say you can get involved in this product and sort of it automatically uh, handles, uh, has these parameters of how it's moving its investments around. And do you want to be a part of it? Um, this will be the new passive experience, but it won't be what will definitely be obsolete is I put my money in Uniswap V2 and we all just 
live with that one curve and this one passive liquidity providing experience. Yeah, that's going to be gone, I think. Um, so to tell you a tiny bit, because your question was originally about Gelato Alpha. So yeah, what we've launched, um, a few things that are really exciting Alpha of what we have. We have a proposal with MakerDAO for our GUNI tokens to be a, a GUNI USDC die pair to be a, a collateral type on MakerDAO. So this is moving through that system currently. So that's pretty exciting. Um, uh -huh. We also have this, yeah, GUNI has now fully launched a factory so that anybody can deploy a pool, like basically anybody can deploy a version of a fractionalized uh, position, a, a fractionalizable position on a Uniswap V3 pair of their choice. Um, and we have this model basically where there's a there can be a manager, right? The manager can be the zero address so that it's more trustless, but that also you can uh, specify a manager and sort of that manager could do an active rebalancing of the range, but that's handled manually because of course this is very subtle for all the reasons we've just been talking about. Um, and that manager can also basically take a small cut of rebalancing as well. So um, so it has all these possibilities of all these models you could have, people will basically where you could use our auto fee reinvestment, but also have your own active strategy on top. Of course, it's slightly more trusted model. You know, it's not fully trustless. What we're doing with MakerDAO, if it passes, would of course be um, nobody has control over the pool. Nobody's allowed to change the ticks. Um, and which works well, of course, also on stable coins because the ticks really don't ever need to be adjusted. Um, uh, to contrast that with what we're doing with Instadap, which is also live, Instadap just launched their Inst token and um, they wanted to, prov uh, to sort of seed liquidity on Uniswap v3 and have staking rewards. So they wanted it to be fungible. So they're using a GUNI token underneath for the INST ETH pair. Um, and Originally, they, they wanted to have just uh, the ticks totally static as well. Uh, that's part of why how we went in this direction where it's just fee reinvestment. Um, but we've already seen actually that they have uh, they've they've utilized their uh, their power to be able to move the ticks. And basically, it's really cool to watch how somebody seeding liquidity for their new token um, using our system can very easily just sort of move uh, everybody's. Uh, liquidity all at once and move a few million dollars of liquidity in, in one transaction, um, uh, which is the the whole fractionalized position. Who knows who all the users and owners are, and it all just you know gets moved really easily, and they can basically have really uh, fine grained control over the INST ETH pair and and where they want their liquidity to be. That's really uh, cool. Um, yeah, these are these are the early days of all of this stuff. So. Um, the the question from the audience was uh, when when multi chain gelato. Oh, cool! Yes, well, um, it's a really interesting question. We're already doing some of this. So gelato has limit orders on Phantom. We have limit orders on Polygon and with Quip, Quick Swap. And this is another cool place where Uniswap V three. Just to mention the range order, as you talked about. Um, could use automation, of course, because if you want it to really act like a limit order, the Uniswap V3 range order, you need to withdraw your liquidity once it's filled. So yep. this is another great place for Gelato. Very simple. Basically, my task when I first looked at Uniswap V3 was find all the places where automation could be useful um, and like what are all the lowest hanging fruits. Um, in there, and of, and this is one that, of course, is not that exciting. It's not as cool as automatically moving all the liquidity in a uh, uh, on a pair, but um, but it could be still be very very useful. You have your range order, but once it's filled, you actually want it removed so that it doesn't get reversed. Um, but uh, so the question was, yeah, we're already on Polygon, we're already on Phantom, we're looking into other uh, L2s and side chains, and another really exciting piece of alpha, I guess, for Gelato. Um, another thing we're looking into, nothing settled yet, but is like cross-chain liquidity. So making it possible to have like instant withdrawals from your um, optimistic rollup instead of waiting a week. Um, if you have liquidity on both sides, both on the Ethereum one chain and on your optimistic chain, you can actually withdraw your assets right away. Um, and you need gelato automation in the background to basically take what's built up um, on the layer two and actually eventually move it to the layer one liquidity providers. And they, um, uh, so this uh, quick 
cross chain cross chain bridges, which I'm sure you know all about over at Cosmos, um, uh, is another thing we're looking into. Awesome. Uh, thank you for your time, Ari. This was great. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, see you online. Yeah, exactly. See, thanks so much. This was great, and let's keep talking about Uniswap V3. It's cool to talk with others who are, you know, hacking away, and it's very early days, as you've said. So we'll keep learning. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Of course. Peace. Peace.